India's relationship with the UK is a long-standing friendship that has spanned decades. On his diplomatic visit to India, the UK Minister of State for South Asia spoke to Vion. His lordship delves into the potential around India-UK free trade agreement and UK's response to the recent vandalism in the country. Listen in. What, though, is important for sectors and industries, but also companies on both sides, to be not just protected, but to be provided with opportunities to expand further. And that's the essence. And to you, uh, sort of use a phrase, the spirit, if I may, of the FTA. So I, there will be details that our various officials are working on currently, but we're making good progress. Several chapters have progressed and been closed, and we remain hopeful on reaching, reaching an early agreement. It's important, the FTA. The framework that it sets across different sectors is an important sense of collaboration between our two countries, and it's a key deliverable of our partnership. But notwithstanding, whilst those negotiations continue, as I've already illustrated through the example of these entrepreneurs, and as I've seen already, in a time when we needed a friend, India stood with us. When India needed a friend, we stood with India. And that's how you define a true partnership and friendship. But the United Kingdom and India's relationship is in a very strong place. And that's demonstrable by the strong relationship both professionally and personally between our two prime ministers. You saw the strong sense and the communique that came out of the meeting they had. It wasn't just warm words. There were some very practical uh, deliverables. And indeed, both prime ministers stated their ambition to deliver upon what we were just talking about, the free trade agreement. You mentioned the issue of the uh, attack on the High Commission, and it was deplorable. Let me be absolutely clear. We take the security of India, indeed the security of every mission in the United Kingdom to the Court of St. James extremely seriously. It is our responsibility. I immediately visited your excellent High Commissioner in India, as did the Security Minister Tom Chuganha, to ensure that the response, indeed showing solidarity, but importantly the response that was needed is stood up very quickly. And we have security provisions in place. We're also looking at added security uh, structures within the framework of the diplomatic mission. But I assure you that the UK takes all these responsibilities very seriously because these are very much the representatives of different governments on the soil of the UK. And we need to ensure they're fully protected. Well, first and foremost, you know, we need to really unpack this. Any form of extremism is a challenge. It's a challenge to the society in which it is being um, practiced. It's a challenge beyond and it has ramifications. We've suffered, as has India, from the whole onset of extremism of different kind. But we've got to be very clear. First and foremost, there's often religion is associated with extremism. Never can be their more erroneous link established. There is no religion that justifies violent actions against a another on the basis of difference of opinion. Let's be absolutely clear about that. I was a former minister for countering extremism in the United Kingdom, and we must tackle that extremist ideology, which then sometimes infiltrates vulnerable minds or communities and address it head on. You mentioned about pro-Khalistan extremists, any kind of extremists is to be condemned. 